Hey everybody, it's Pete. Welcome. It is Friday morning, June 19th, 2020. Got a little bit of a sore throat. We actually had an awesome presentation last night. We did 90 minutes of teaching on order flow. Uh, we introduced the bootcamp. Uh, if you want to watch the video, uh, the replay of last night's presentation, in case you couldn't make the training, I'm actually going to put the link right down below. Um, you can see we actually did some whiteboard stuff. All the secrets in the world are right there. <laughs> um, it, was, it was awesome. It was the first live presentation I've done in a long, long time. Um, I used to do seminars all over the world, actually. Uh, I stopped doing it for a while, but I really got into a groove last night. It was a lot of fun. Uh, if you have some time, either tonight or this weekend, um, definitely make a pot of coffee, uh, grab a glass of water. Uh, definitely watch it. It was it was a lot of fun, and we got really, really into the weeds on um, the number one goal that I promised everybody, which is actually what we're going to talk about today, um, which is you, you should always have conviction in what you're looking at. And most of the money that people lose in the market, it's not so much because uh, they um, don't know what they're doing. It's because you're... Um, you're taking bad trades. There's really no other way to put it. And I think even uh, 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 to take that even a level deeper is that there's really good ideas where it's easy to make money. And let's say that was probably like a week and a half ago, two weeks ago. Actually, let's take it back a week because that was prior to the Fed announcement. Um, and then the market action after the Fed announcement. And I think it's really important um, for you as a trader who, who's going into the market that you understand what does really good look like versus what does it look like when you should be pulling back or maybe not even being in anything. Um, and interestingly, we, we, uh, we were talking about Boeing as a stock that has been pretty actively traded inside the community. Um, but lately, uh, it's been a mess. It's, it's been very hard to read. The daily charts um, have uh, <laughs> kind of like an oxymoron, lack of clarity. Um, I was going to say tremendous lack of clarity, but that doesn't make sense. It, it, it's not clear. And I'm going to show you what clear means for, prior to um, what we're experiencing right now and what most of the market is experiencing right now, which is indecision type candlesticks, um, confusing type price action, super light volume, which by the way, you need to know what your average volume is in your stocks uh, in order to know when there's good liquidity, which that's when you could expect follow through. When I say liquidity, if you happen to be a new trader, that means that average daily volume of what the stock normally does, and you can find that anywhere really um, in any software. Uh, you can probably look that up on Yahoo Finance. Personally, myself, just to maybe give you a baseline, I don't trade stocks that trade less than 2 million shares per day. If you get to the point where you want to trade some size, you need liquidity so that you can reasonably exit a trade like that when you want to. It's when those spreads start to get wide where you feel like you have a profitable trade and if you have to get out of the trade quickly um, you end up what's known as hitting the bid and let's just say for argument's sake your stock is going higher what you'd obviously love to do is place an offer up here to sell and you get the best price as it's going up you're advertising to sell but what happens and, and this is a mistake that i see a lot of retail traders make is when the stock starts moving against them they do what's called a market order to sell. So let's just say for argument's sake, I'll keep the numbers really um, simple. Let's say that whatever stock you're looking at is advertised to buy at $50. So those are people advertising a limit order to get into a stock at 50. And I use the term advertised to buy very clearly, uh, purposefully. And the offer side um, is, let's just say for argument's sake, $50 and 25 cents. Now, that's a 25 cent difference between the advertisement to buy and the advertisement to sell. So if it's going up, you're going to advertise to sell. You're going to try and get out at 50, 25. If you don't, most retail traders mistakenly will mark it out, which means you're hitting the bid in trading terminology and you are actively selling to other people who are advertising to buy. Now, that's where it becomes a big deal. And you don't realize how much this adds up over the month. And, and this is what I'm talking about liquidity. If you try to get out of 5025, great, right? But if you can't, there's now a 25 cent spread. And if you exit out over here, and especially if you use a market order, market orders, you can get any price on the route that you place the order. But let's just keep it simple. Let's say you definitely got filled at, at 50. That's a $250 loss. <laughs> 
just on the difference between the spread. So the spread is the difference between the advertised buy and the advertised sell. So when I talk about liquidity, I talk about that in a way that I'm trying to convey to you that the more liquidity a stock has, generally speaking, the tighter the spread. So in normal stocks, and when I say normal, I mean stuff that has liquidity, the spread might be $50 and 50.02. <laughs> it could literally be that tight. That's the kind of spreads that you want if you are especially a new trader and you wanna, you wanna get out reasonably at a spot where you say, I wanna get out, I wanna get out at a good price, and I wanna good odds that somebody's going to be there. That's why I talk about liquidity. I see some people, um, especially brand new traders who see something in the news uh, or just run a scanner in a stock that they've never looked at before and they don't take that step where I have that minimum criteria, which is average 2 million shares per day, and that's, that's where the liquidity is, and that's average. Most stocks trade 10, 15, 20 million shares per day. Um, and then there's volatility, which is profit potential, and that's average true range. Average true range is the distance between where the stock has a low price and a high price. Generally speaking, most software is default to 14 days, so the average true range of opportunity on a regular basis in those stocks. So when you combine liquidity, which is average volume, that means that smart money, a lot of institutional activity, a lot of trading, a lot of bids and offers tend to be trading in that stock. So you have a better chance of getting out and, and getting in, quite honestly, at a reasonable price because of that liquidity. So you're kind of managing the downside and you're ensuring that you have um, consistency to, uh, to large green candles um, if you're buying because that consistency, now not once in a while, consistently happens uh, which because of that activity. And the average true range is the opportunity. I've actually seen traders, and I did this before in my past, um, where you, you try to trade stocks that um, you feel safe in and they don't move that much so there's not that much downside. Um, I understand that. I've done that in the past, but the problem is there's also not that much opportunity to make money if they're not moving. So you really have to balance opportunity um, and uh, risk, uh, and the risk side can really be mitigated or reduced a bit when you're looking at um, average volume. Average volume is a big deal um, because you want, to, you want to feel like if I need to get out, I can get out where I want to. But what I want to focus on today is um, we're going to go into a, a quick explanation of why some traders had made super easy money, which we did in the community. You could actually watch that in the webinar, um, as well as um, why some traders are struggling right now. And it really comes down to the decisions you're making into which stocks are obvious and which stocks are noise. Uh, so I'm gonna give two really, um, uh, I, I guess really obvious examples, which is why I'm gonna use them. So. Uh, the first stock we're going to look at is a stock that we actually called out yesterday um, as one of our stock picks. Uh, so we're going to go over to the screen and I'm going to walk you through what perfect looks like um, versus what um, what you should stay away from, and that's causing uh, causing all the gray hair. <laughs> all right, so we're going to go over to the charts and um, we're going to take a look. So the first stock we're going to look at is Net Cloudflare. So you can see that it's a relatively new stock. This is actually the monthly chart and all of the history of, of the um, of the stock. So what we want to pay attention to is on the monthly. So this represents April. This represents, uh, excuse me, this is May, and this is all of June so far. So perfect in this sense means that because it's a large green candlestick, that means that it opened down here and closed up there. It opened here to start June, and this is where the last price is. Today is obviously June 19th, so this is where it's traded. So we have two really good candlesticks where they're large green candlesticks closing on the highs, and right now trading on the highs because the month is still unfolding. That's a good scenario. Then you go down to the weekly charts, and within those same two months, you have some weeks that we're doing the same thing, and obviously this week has been a really perfect week from the buying side. So if you just scale it all the way back down to a really good month, really good two months, a couple of choppy weeks, right? So let me, let me actually pull that out so you can see. So you can see that these are less than perfect. So these weeks, you wouldn't be doing anything. But because the month is still perfect, you line up and wait for one of these types of candlesticks, and this is what you end up getting. So you have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, where you have 
green candlesticks, explosions in green candlesticks in the direction of a really good month and a good week. And these are the types of days where you can feel confident. And what does confidence mean? Like, why should you feel confident? Well, if you watch the webinar, we actually discussed how to read the tape and we discussed the one price that you need to know to understand if you should be buying or selling right now. Now, here's the key. Each of these candlesticks are green and they're making higher highs and higher lows. So you can feel conviction, you can feel confidence that the way I described it in the webinar is everything looks good, but then you need to know when that changed. So I'm gonna have a pretty stark image that looks different from this, which is Boeing. So you can see how different the Boeing chart is and why a lot of traders are uh, feeling frustrated where Boeing obviously sold off pretty hard. So you can see that there was several months of selling. Then we had two months of really nothing. We can call that indecision. And if you look at that on the, on the daily chart, you can see that we just had consolidation, consolidation, right? But then we exploded and that was here, but this is June and we had some parts of June that were positive. So the entire month so far has been positive. Then you had one really good week. Now here's the key, and this is where a lot of traders got into um, a frustrating trading experience last Thursday and Friday, and it, for, for the most part, heading into this week because they didn't recognize what I'm about to show you. So if we talk about what perfect looks like, if you wanna be a buyer, that's consecutive green candlesticks making higher highs and higher lows, and best case scenario, closing on or near the highs. So you can see that we had that for one week, which was here, then the scenario changed. So immediately coming into the week, if Monday prints here, which that's the opening price, and you go into the week wanting to be a buyer, but the stock this week is a sale, smart money is selling that stock, that means that you have to say to yourself, wow, something different's happening this week, so I have to reevaluate what I'm looking at in the stock. And this is what ended up happening for the week. And now we're in this week where we're green, but we're anything but trading higher. So it's been a frustrating week because we need to do a better job of recognizing first and foremost what perfect looks like. And we're just going to come back to the screen. First and foremost, we need to know what perfect looks like. And if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know that everything that I try and get across is that there's perfect and then everything that moves away from perfect. So I just gave you a really tiny sample of what perfect looks like. There's some more to it, but you should be able to at least look at a chart and say, okay, I understand what I'm looking at. And as long as that continues, I should feel confident. Then it's really just a question of, do you understand how to time your entries in and out at the right, at the right moment, right? So once you know what perfect looks like, anytime you look at a trade that's moved away from perfect, you have to sit back and say, okay, it's not ideal. Uh, do I continue to trade it? Do I lower my share size or Boeing as an example, do I do nothing and wait for the opportunity to look better? There's some scenarios in the market where there are really good opportunities. We just looked at net. We looked at SE. We've been watching uh, Lulu, which was perfect, didn't become, and then went up again. Um, so what you want to be able to do, just again, grab a, grab a pot of coffee, click down and watch the, um, watch the webinar replay from last night. We covered a lot of stuff. Um, we covered a lot of stuff. It was a lot of fun. Um, and then, um, Take a look at some of your charts and ask yourself, were you trading where it was perfect? And if you were, did you make what you were supposed to? Uh, and if you did trade when it was less than perfect, next time you'll recognize that and you'll take a step back and you say, you know what? This isn't what I want to see, so I don't want to put my money in harm's way. So hopefully that's a pretty good explanation. Um, if you have any questions, absolutely leave, uh, leave your feedback below the video. Definitely watch the webinar video. It's absolutely worth your time. And if you can please um, subscribe to the channel so you get updates. And I, that would mean a lot to me if you did. I'd really appreciate it. Have a great day. Be safe and actually have a great weekend too. Take care, everybody.